Hey everybody, David Burns here. I'm gonna tell you today, are communication holes on frames worth it or worthless? I bet a lot of you as new beginners have never really contemplated what in the world do bees use with a communication hole and where is it located? Got some good information for you. Plus today, we're gonna to give some names out of those who have won a book autographed by me and Cherry. We're gonna send that out to you. We have selected at random five winners, so stay tuned. Good to be with you. Wow, I have been so busy the last few days. I'm trying to get ready to go out to um, North Carolina for the state conference there uh, this coming weekend, flying out in the morning. And then I'll be at Ithaca, New York all next week with EAS. So looking forward to speaking a few times and uh, helping out with certifying master beekeepers. It's gonna be a lot of fun. But today I'm gonna talk to you before I take off about the communication holes. Now, if you've not really studied much about communication holes, what I'm referring to is this right here. Well, here's an example of communication holes. This is a, a medium super that's in a 10 frame deep box. And as you can tell here, they left some area between this gap because they could. And you can see bees passing through it. It's known as a communication hole. And you can see the bees are utilizing it. Some people I've heard say communication holes on the bottom of the frames really don't make any difference at all. And I've even said it before, you know, is it really that important because bees can wrap around that frame so easily. But it seems like it does give them a nice little travel area to go through. Now, in all my years of beekeeping, I've never really fooled much with the communication hole that comes provided as an option almost on every single frame that you buy. And I'll show that in just a minute. Now, when I first started beekeeping, I was using wax foundation with the wires, and I still have a lot of those frames, <laughs> believe it or not, that are still functional in my hives. Take a look at this. Here's some of those frames right here. You can see that ha they have wires, you, if you look kind of closely. And you can tell the, uh, on these frames, the actual comb does not go all the way down to the wood or all the way across to the edge wood. If you notice, you can sort of see the bees using these communication holes. It's actually just space left around the edges, particularly the bottom, of these frames that bees pass through rather than go all the way down around the wood of the frame. Now, in the old days, I think, you know, when I got into um, foundation, that like this right here, and I started using this instead of wax, I'm not saying I never broke them off, but I don't think I really got too crazy about breaking them off. And what I'm referring to is that when you buy a foundation like this, a plastic foundation, you will notice that at the corner of these pieces of foundation, there is a perforation right here. This area of perforation, all you do is give it a good twist or two, can't do it with one hand, and it will actually break off. Wow, that was sudden. Wow, almost was afraid maybe I cut myself, it's hard plastic. Okay, see how I snapped these little pieces off here, and now, we actually have these communication holes that we've made right here in the frame. Now, I looked at this one here that a company sent me, and for the life of me, I really don't see much of a perforation, but I sort of do a little bit. I'm really mystified about this. So I guess anyway, if you want to use the communication holes, then by all means, it wouldn't take anything at all. You've seen me cut these with tin snips. Uh, you could cut off these corners. And uh, I suspect if you made a hole somewhere up here, the bees are gonna fill that in. But if you wanted to kind of cut out a little bit of the corners, like you saw in some of my frames where the bees chose how to build it, they chose not to make this piece go all the way to the wood so they could pass through and corners and so on. And especially the bottom. I don't see a lot of bees um, building comb all the way down to the bottom 
unless you're using foundation like this, where they're forced to do it because that's a, that's the distance of the frame. Now let's talk about whether it's worth it or worthless. I think after doing a lot of observation of frames that bees make on their own, that's wax frames, not the plastic foundations, and me observing their behavior and how they leave communication ports and holes to travel on, I'm gonna definitely give this one a worth it. I really have come to the conclusion that it is worth it to have these things knocked off. I would probably in the future go as far after I've done some studying of, of what the bees do. I might even knock, notch out a few little corners right here on the edges, maybe here on the bottom. Now, some of you may say, David, you're crazy. And I've even said this. What difference does it make if a bee walks here and just you know walks around the end bar versus just walks through the hole? I don't know, but they're doing it. So there must be a reason they're just wanting to take a shortcut. So tomorrow, do you want to walk five miles or do you want to walk four and a half? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, do you, do you really want to have to lift 50 pounds? Or are you okay lifting 40 pounds? Bees are doing a lot of walking. They're doing a lot of traveling. They're just not making one pass. They're maybe carrying things back and forth between frames. So if they have to make that extra distance, maybe, I don't know, 100, 500 times a day, that could be a lot of little steps for six feet. <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking, worth it. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's notch these out. And again, if you don't have frames with the perforations already there, uh, take some tin snips and snip those out. Now that's kind of an idea that maybe you've never heard of and it's like, Boy, David, you've blown my mind. I had no idea that frames came with these knockouts on there. I saw little dots down there, but are you sure they don't go at the top? How do you know they don't go in the, in the top like this? How do you know they're supposed to go at the bottom? Well, because in the old days, uh, we noticed that communication ports were at the lower part of the frames, and you can see it on my wax foundations as well. Okay, guys, I have some books to give away. Thank you so much for leaving some great comments. This is from Hikaruma. It says, I love an autographed copy of your book here in Reno, Nevada. I have recommended your channel to so many people. I'm with the maybe Northern Nevada Beekeepers Association, NNBA. I like how Bee clubs always like to abbreviate their names, NNBA. But I'm just a first year beekeeper. I really appreciate your expertise. Well, thank you so much. We're gonna get an autographed copy out to you. And be sure to email us at longlanehoneybees at gmail.com and let us know that you won that book and send us your shipping information. Also, our next winner is Lloyd Miller, first year beekeeper here with my son. Love your videos, full of great information and I like how it feels like you're talking to me and not just a camera. <laughs> hey, Lloyd. <laughs> Keep up the excellent work, by the way. We would love to have your new book. Well, Lloyd, you got it. That's awesome. Lloyd, be sure and look at the email address here, longlanehoneybees at gmail.com and send us your address. Let us know you won the book and my staff will get that book out to you. Kathy Jones is a winner. Way to go, Kathy. She says, thank you, David, for your expertise in beekeeping. I really have learned a lot from watching your videos, especially when it comes to varroa mite treatments. I would love to have your book. You got it, Kathy. Email us and send us your address to ship it to. We'll get right on that. And I think we have, what, two more? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, two more. Joy. You won, Joy Boschler. David, I sell these books in my store. I would love to give away your autographed copy in my January class. Let's see, well, you'll make it. This is only July, so that's good, Joy. Uh, Joy, email us, let us know your shipping address. We'll get the book right out to you. And last but not least is Betsy Harlow. You are a winner. I would love an autographed copy of your book. I have told several other beginning beekeepers to follow your videos. I also told them how much I love your classes. I love being able to re-watch them when I need a refresher. Well, Betsy, that's very nice of you. And uh, email us at this address in the screen here and uh, send us your address to ship these autographed copies of these books to. We'll get right on that. So guys, keep watching my YouTube videos for giveaways. I've got some more Pierce beekeeping giveaways. They were so kind to send me some more things a little different, and I'm gonna feature those in an upcoming video. You'll have a lot of fun 
attempting to win new products that they're giving us to uh, share with you guys. So I hope you do that. Well, I'm going to be making a lot of videos while I'm on the road. It's going to be a lot of work because, man, I've got a lot of packing to do in just a few hours and catch my plane out early in the morning. But it's going to be fun. Keep watching my YouTube channel here. You're going to see great videos coming up uh, of my experience in speaking out in North Carolina and also being with a whole bunch of beekeepers, hundreds of beekeepers and master beekeepers in New York. So I'll keep you informed of all the new video information coming up on, on my travels. And again, if I see some of you in New York and if I see some of you in North Carolina, be sure and let me know that you're a subscriber and that you are a watcher of my channel. Come up to me and introduce yourself. Don't be shy. And if you haven't seen my last video, we actually did a little experimenting with queens and whether or not uh, how they ball and act when a queen is released or presented to the a hive. That's, that's a good little experiment. This video here, watch this one. It will tell you all about it. I'll see you over there.